Oh, welcome to the Match Review Show on YouTube live the morning after the night before. Um, we're here. I'm Chris Pajak. I'm joined by Tom and obviously Ross for the Match Review. This is like the precursor to the final word show on the website. It's my warm up essentially because uh, what we do is the full in depth analysis on the redmentv.com. It's five pounds a month if you aren't subscribed to that. There's loads of articles, there's exclusive videos, exclusive podcasts. You can take it with you on the go, on your mobile phone, or you can consume it however you want. We've got Nina Kauser from the Anfield Index coming in today for the final word show. It, it, it promises to be absolutely fantastic. We've got Steve Hoare, who will be recording the Reds News Roundup show later on, so do go over and check that out. Uh, we will get into the comments section. We'll probably just run through a few talking points much like Monday lads um, I think the story of the game first and foremost Ross is you know frustrated again spurned opportunities yeah it's just same old same old again isn't it if, you know instead of moaning about the defence we're moaning about the attack for a change we're just not, <laughs> not being able to finish it's just yeah. just frustrating to I mean you, you, you kind of watch it at home you're just willing and edging them over yourself aren't you just to, to, to put the ball on the back of the net and it just wasn't happening last night yeah. at all. Yeah. I counted five clear cut opportunities there. Like, in the box though. And uh, the best thing about that at Liverpool side is we create chances like that. We just create so many opportunities. But I don't, we had Studdard John. He's our best finisher. And he, and he skies that shot. That's you know. mental, isn't it? I mean, you know, f first and foremost, the Trent Alexander-Arnold was probably the first major chance for us. You know, breaking into the box, Ross controls it on his chest and unfortunately just hits it wide. And, you know, we, we talk about, we've spoken over the last couple of weeks about the difference between Joe Gomez and Trent mm. Alexander-Arnold. And, you know, it's been said, hasn't it, that Gomez is more solid defensively, but what he doesn't offer is he doesn't offer that attacking threat like Trent either. No, I thought Trent was one of our one of our best players last night, yeah. to be honest, I think between him and Henderson was, was probably man of the match. Um, even defensively, I thought he was bringing, I, the whole of our defence last night. I don't think anyone, I've seen it anywhere of people giving credit to how good our defence was last night. I think even, even Lovren. As much as Lovren was the standout yeah, defender yeah, for me um, last night. As much as you know, I slagged him off, he came out and, and made some important tackles and headers and, and clearances that he, he needed to make. Yeah. Um, and like, he only counted that he only had two chances, but that's not just because they, they were poor. Do you know what I mean? It's because we were in control defensively as well. I Definitely. thought, um, and then I said for Trent, I just thought, you know what I mean, it's a matter of time before he scores another goal. Mm. I was half hoping that he would have taken that free kick, but Coutinho <laughs> took it instead. Um, but do you know what I mean? It's just, a, and even more so, it's experience for him. Again, another on a away fixture in the Champions League. Do you know what I mean? He's only 18. Yeah, it's mad, isn't it, Tom? And listen, another guy who we'll, we'll get into the comments shortly when people start commenting, yes, I'm looking at you. Um, one of the one of the people that seems to be getting quite a little bit of stick online from last night for his performance was Roberto Firmino. Now, do you think that's fair, or do you think he had an okay game? It's hard because he misses those clear cut opportunities. He's a striker; he's meant to put them away. But I don't think he had a bad game. I think he he there was a move early on in the game, and we said he wouldn't have got it up because in the Premier League, he's yeah, not it's fast one that set up Mane shot, yeah, isn't it? So he, He's got. He's in the middle of the pitch. He sees where he can run to. He sees the space. Runs into the space. Gets the ball to feed, and then plays it into the middle. And we create an attack off that. And that's what he's so good at is linking it up. I don't think. I don't think it's his fault that we drew one one. You know what I mean? I don't think he should take a load of stick from it. The attack was good. We just didn't finish. Yeah, I think you're right. Listen, you know, I could I could reel through some of the opportunities that we had. We had that Trent Alexander Arnold one. Firmino misses the header from close range. Uh, Trent Alexander Arnold whips the ball in for Sadio Mane, who's offside. Yeah. Uh, Henderson with a great ball, which goes off Firmino's knee after it comes off the defender. Um, you've got the break with Trent Alexander Arnold running through, and he passes it to Henderson, and you know there's that one. Uh, you got the Coutinho free kick that yeah. he puts it bottom corner. You got Henderson to Sturridge, which is the one you mentioned, where you just go how, why, yeah. how has Daniel Sturridge missed this one? Uh, and then you've got Trent Alexander Arnold whipping the ball in again to Mo Salah yeah. for his header that goes straight at the keeper. Now, you know I want to give credit where credit's due. Uh, both goalkeepers. For Spartak Moscow last night were brilliant, weren't they, Ross? You should maybe buy one of them. <laughs> 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 I think, uh, yeah, particularly the first one, I think he, he had a lot more to do in terms of you know, the Coutinho the free kick and, and everything else that was going on. Yeah. Um, but there was like no point where you, you know, you're, you're not worried about their goalkeeper, are you? And then as soon as they get an attack on our one, 
you know, you, you kind of start thinking about it, don't you? If going, oh, they, they might score, especially when it was nil nil and they had the first attack. And my, I thought, oh, it's going to come back and bite us on the backside again. Mm -hmm. And that's um, it, isn't it? You know, and, and listen, we, we've spoken about it already briefly. Um, we've spoken about how good the defence was, Tom, haven't we? And you know, it wasn't down to poor defending that we conceded that goal as much as well. What, what did you think the reasons were? Well, it wasn't a foul to start with, was it? Yeah. It was Coutinho tracking back. He gets the ball. I mean, they didn't show us on the on the game at the time, but I've seen it back. It's just not a foul. He did. It's a clean tackle, pretty much. It's a great free kick, but it's hard because our defence recycled the play. That's what we want to do every single game is we win the ball back close to the halfway line and then we start it up again and we did that consistently. They had... How many shots? Did they have two? They had two on target and scored one. Yeah. It, well, that, and one of them was a free kick. I mean, you can say say a lot of people have been slagging Karius off. I watched it back. He should have saved it. I agree now. Because um, when I first watch it, I'm thinking the pace on the ball. He doesn't see it till late. But he reaches there after a the fact, you can see. I'm sure he's been caught out with that before last season. West Ham, wasn't it? Yeah, and because I remember we didn't talk about how much of a, a gap he left on that side. I'm pretty sure they scored as well. Yeah. I mean, well we were talking to Paul about it, and, and Paul obviously was a goalkeeper and stuff, and he, he he said at the time that it's the most difficult position to line a wall up for because, you you, you know, centrally, yeah. you've got to almost pick a side. Now, yeah. when I watched it back, I wondered whether, you know, the wall was quite set up right, and, and, and Paul disagreed. I, I think he said maybe it could have been half a step over to the post, and that's fair enough. I'll bow to him on that because he was the goalkeeper. Uh, but regardless whether the wall's half a step over or not, the fact is it goes over the wall yeah. and it comes at him with power. Now, I always sort of look back at free kicks, and the, and the ones that you hear commentators say over and over is this, he's seen it late. Yeah. Well, the free kick was so far out that he really... You know the, the free. You know the walls on the edge of the area. Yeah. He's got eighteen yards there. It is hit with loads of power. I expect that goalkeeper to save that. I expect all three of our goalkeepers to save that. Um, but other than that, I don't think he had a bad game as such. I think his distribution was okay. It was yeah. not nothing to write home about. He did everything else that he needed to do. He punched clear in yeah. the box and stuff like that. It really does come down to the attack this game. And you know we've seen so many times, Tom, over the over the last few weeks, people talking about Liverpool's inability to defend and, and how good we are going forward. Let's not forget this was the first game that these four have played together yeah. in competitive football. You know, Coutinho, Mane, Salah, and Firmino. They've created. They've had sixteen shots. Of goals, six of which were on target, four were block shots, five of those shots were from outside the box and 11 of those were worked opportunities inside the box. Now that's almost unheard of, isn't yeah. it? You know, we're constantly working opportunities yeah. in the 18-yard box. That's the thing, is we get one more goal. Literally, if it's a 2-1, we're made up with that. I mean, obviously, maybe not made up, but attacking-wise, we weren't bad. We were really, really good, actually. I mean, there's the one with Firmino at the end of the game where all he needs to do is square it to Salah or yeah. Sturridge on the back, and he doesn't. He plays it behind, and I think that's been our eternal problem. Again, with the breakaway, when Trent's running with the ball and he makes the, the right pass to Henderson, who then needs to square it, I mean, that, it's just... Is that when Mane goes offside? Mane goes offside and Salah misses it somehow, but... It's that final ball, and I don't know what it was yesterday, because everything, everything else was perfect. We broke with intent. We we kept the ball. We recycled it. We kept it going. We stretched on the wings. We were putting balls in when we need to. We looked dangerous when we did that. Even I I I don't know. It's what baffling. It is. It's baffling, that, isn't it? Okay, well I'm going to go into the comments. Go on, Ross. I would say that it. second goal is key, isn't it? Because if you get that second goal and you're ahead. That changes the way the opposition have to yeah. have to play. They have to come out, and then that's where we're most dangerous of just hitting people on the breakdown. But it just didn't happen again, like Burnley, or we weren't having any severe. But do you know what I mean? It's just well, that's why that's what I was saying last night. And I understood match reaction, and I've said it for a couple of weeks now. Is that Liverpool need to start scoring the first goal, and mm -hmm. we'll start snotting teams because yeah. right now, you know, they were playing with five at the back last night, and they played it well. You know, that's the first time Liverpool have come up against five at the back this season. Let's not forget that we've crafted how many opportunities against five man defence with four in front of it. Yeah. Very very low block. Um, but one of the things for me is this Liverpool side needs to just. It sounds it sounds obvious. We need to stop conceding the first goal because this side is built to go and counter-attack teams. Yeah. And when they get the first goal, 
they're thinking, oh, this is working, it's yeah. brilliant. And when you get back to level pegging, they're still not changing the game. Whereas we go that one goal up in, in front, they have to come out, and that's where the pace of Mane and Salah, for me, exactly. is going to win the game. So into the comments, uh, I asked the question, do you think we'll be able to get out of the group? Uh, Anti-depressive kebab says we'll get out of the group, but must win games against Maribor, though Sevilla will probably finish top. Uh, Kevin Davis uh, Chelsea fan says, yes, you will get out of the group stage. Nice to hear from a Chelsea fan. Thanks for the comments. Uh, I think we'll top the group, said Jaden Tindall, which is quite nice to hear. Of course we will. It might give us a kick up the arse coming second and getting a world-class opposition, says mm. Mitchell Balzan. Um, <coughs> uh, OK. Here's, a, here's something that we, we briefly mentioned before, and we'll, we'll take it from Ivan Doctor's comment. Lovren was good yesterday. Um, Tom, you spoke about it a little bit before, so we'll come on to you, Ross. Yeah, I said, well, I've mentioned it before as well, but one of his biggest critics recently of, you know, I know he made a mistake against, um, Bur was it Burnley or Sevilla? Sevilla. Sevilla, when he completely missed the ball, and I mean, trying to choose between him and, and Clavon's a, a difficult choice because they've both been on, on poor form recently, but. As I said before, you know, defensively, I think everyone that back, whole back four was was pretty sound last night. I wouldn't say they were amazing because they didn't have that much to do, but between them and, and the midfielders, I thought the defensive work and you, like you said, winning the ball back and then just playing straight back out again, I thought they was you know it was, it was good at times, and especially Lovren. Okay, well we'll move on to another comment. Uh, this one coming from Apple. And a shed load of numbers. I'm not even going to bother reading them out. Uh, Liverpool can't play important games. Tom, is it a confidence issue? I don't know because we still play well. We, it seems the confident the confidence issue is when we need to go and attack teams. Like you say, we're set up to be counter attacking side, but when we want to, when we just want to attack a team, we we've had problems with that. But again, we didn't have problems doing that yesterday. I don't think we had a lack of confidence. Everyone came out there and went, "We can win this." Everyone knew they could win it, and we took it quite. Patiently for how we've been playing, we 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 played smartly. We were playing through the wings, stretching the play, and we created the host of opportunities. I, it it yeah. it truly is baffling because we've walked away from that game, and you know I went onto football Twitter and it was it was the wrong decision <laughs> to be honest with you. It was it was a terrible decision because normally we film our stuff and I don't, I don't check my phone before and because I don't want to be tainted in what I'm saying yeah. and what I think from the game with other people's opinions. But I was bored and, you know, I was trying not to listen to Paul do his match checks and stuff because exactly the same. I don't want to try and repeat stuff that he said. Yeah. If I do it unintentionally, that's fine. Uh, but I don't want to watch his show and then repeat something. Um, so I went on there and it was just all doom and gloom. And, like, everyone's saying the attack's crap and the defence is crap and, and Liverpool are crap. And, and I'm just thinking to myself, it's an away draw in the Champions League, ultimately. And I just think, yeah. how are we, why, why did we think when we had um, Balotelli and Lambert that we were going to win the Champions League? Yeah. And why do we think now when we've got Firmino, Mane, Salah and Coutinho that we're the shittest team in world football? No. It's, it's not, we're, we're all nuts and what is it? Is it, is it the lack of trophies that's doing that to us? Probably and I think, I think it's now the pressure that we everyone thinks well now we do we need to win both games against Maribor and a game against Sevilla or Spartak and we're just putting a load of pressure on ourselves we should have won that Sevilla game we should have won last night with the create with the chances that we created I just think we're making it so much harder for us I don't agree with the doom and gloom I think we're a fantastic side and we will get through this group definitely but why are we making it so difficult and Anyone like Paul, you might be able to correct me here. We have made it difficult in Champions League groups and Europa League groups pretty much consistently throughout my lifetime. Is that a fair comment? I can't, it, it might not be exclusively true, but yeah, I'm that's the, the general ones. feeling. We did it last year in the, or the year before last in the Europa League as well. We drew a load of games and then we turned it on. 2005, best example, because we're terrible in that group. 
Yeah. It's mad, isn't it? And, that, and that's kind of what Liverpool do. We've always made it hard work for ourselves, but we always seem to perform better as the underdog, don't we, Rash? Um, I think people got hyped up with the whole Manny Firmino thing and just thought, oh, we're going to beat these 4 5 nil. But then it's the same as the Burnley and other things. People don't. Days are gone where people lose respect for the other team that they're trying to go there for either a draw or a win or the the, the quality of the other team. You just think, oh, Spartak Moscow, it's a no, it's a nobody. But people don't watch them week in week out. They don't know how they play. No. They don't know, they don't know the, whole, the, the players that are in that team. So it's like I've never heard of him. So we're going to beat them four five nil easy, and it's, that's not how that's not how it works. Well, let, 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 I tell you what, let's go through the team and see if we if we know who's got Champions League experience in this side. So we have got Larice Carius. I'm going with no. No. Okay, sure. Yeah, Trent Alexander Arnold. No. no, not before this season. Joe Matip, I'd be surprised. Yeah, I don't think so either. Dejan Lovren, no. Yeah. Um, left back Alberto Moreno. He's had loads of Europa, Europa League. League, but I'm not sure he's had Champions League experience. He might have had a season. Pardon? Matip played for Schalke, so he, he has. Um, in the Champions League, really? I was 14, 15. Yeah, of course. Okay. Um, then you've got Roberto Firmino. I don't think Hoffenheim played in the Champions League. I don't think he can count. Flopping. Sadio Mane might have a Red Bull Salzburg. Possibly. But we're not talking top-level Champions no. League experience. Not the side here. So, this is a learning curve for the players as well. You know, it's the first big European away this season. Um, and, you know, apart from the Hoffenheim one, obviously. But it's actually the Champions League now. And we were that was an intimidating atmosphere. Yeah. You know, their fans yeah. were frigging loud yeah. all game, weren't they? And we've got young kids trying to learn their trades and ply their trade in, in this type of hostile atmosphere. It must have been nerve wracking, but we'll come out better for it. Definitely. And I think Klopp's definitely said this to them as well, because he's been through all this. You know, he's learned in in the fire basically. He's had to go through and with with, with Dortmund especially and, and He's learned all these things, so he's saying to these players, look, you'll come out of this game and this is what you will be feeling. This is how to deal with that and this is how we go forward. And I think we'll do really well. Is it a, a way at Maribor to start with? Or is it a home? Yeah, I don't know. But, you know, if it's a way there, we've had, a, we've had a harder away already. And severe as well, we've had a harder away. It's not Russia, you know what I mean? So... I'm confident that the team will just go, just step up. We've we stepped up when we lost against when we lost against Leicester. Yeah, we stepped up the week after and we and we showed them what we're made of. And I think that's what this team is. It's just mm -hmm. gnarly. I really do. Sevilla got to go there as well. I know they're exactly the same thing as they did to us last night. Just yeah, five of them back. Yeah. And make make them yeah. break it. There's a chance they'll, they'll draw that game as well. Doesn't Definitely. Mean? Yeah. Uh, so, quick question then on. Oh, I mentioned it in Rich yeah. I was going to ask you actually about Jordan Henderson because mm. he had a great performance at the weekend against Leicester. What did you think of his performance last night? Yeah, brilliant. Again, like I said before, either him or Trent were, were, were our, our best players last night. Uh, yeah. I think he's, he's, he's passing, like you said before, he's winning the ball back and just passing it straight out to, to Marnie or Salah, I thought was brilliant. Um, that ball to Firmino. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's just a brilliant. I think he did try to do that. Early on against Leicester as well, it yeah. just it, it didn't come off, um, but he's got it in his locker to do, and you can see his confidence is getting up, or maybe even his fitness of, you know, playing consecutive games and stuff. So yeah, um, I thought it was a top performance from last night. I think he's yeah. just unlucky not to come. He was he looked really annoyed last night as well. His post match press, he's just like dead short, snappy things. He's like obviously frustrated, like we all are, that didn't come away with a win. What about Emery then? So, uh, in fact, Scott Kelly thoughts on Emery Chan. Um, I thought he was poor, <laughs> being, really? being honest. I just thought I was um, like we didn't mention it before when we were talking about their goal, but I just don't, I just don't know what he's doing. He's just taking too much time with that ball, and it's a bit rich coming from me. Like he's, yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> he's a he's professional no. footballer, so I'll, I'll give him some stick. Well, but do you reckon you got a shout? Because you you don't do that if you don't get if you get a shout of a man on, you don't go. And still dawdle on it, surely. Is this the one before the goal? Before, yeah, the, before the build up. I, regardless, for me, I feel like he had to fight for the ball twice before he got over to that touchline, yeah. and there was then another three players around him. Only oh, pass it back. And he it? passes it back, yeah. and that's the problem. I even, yeah, so I'm going to say though, because Salah was up the other end, you're not even just gambling going up the other way, and yeah. I hope he goes up for a throw in rather than a blind pass back to 
It's just, yeah, it's it, was, just it, was, it was stupid it? and I thought yeah. his performance was pretty poor on the night. I thought him and Carrius were probably our two weakest players yeah. on the evening. Um, Carrius, I do blame for the free kick, which we've spoken about briefly already. Uh, and Ray, just really inconsistent. So I'll just go into the comments, actually, because I asked for, for people's thoughts. Um, inconsistent, as usual, says Stuart Smith. Uh, Emre is inconsistent, says Lauren Sean. He hides poor performances behind amazing goals. He has potential for sure, but needs someone akin to Carragher on the pitch to shelter him. It's a, that's a great that point, one. isn't it? Yeah. About the Carragher stuff, yeah. Tom. Why do you think that's a good point? I, he, he just lacks a bit of discipline sometimes. And I don't think... I mean, Hendo likes to shout, don't get me wrong, during the game. But even Alana, um I know, but Lallana was a captain as well, you know what I mean? And you watch him on the pitch and he's a, he's a knobhead, you know what I mean? He, he screams at people. He, he, he needs someone to just say, you get back, you switch on. And, I mean, he's only 23. He's still, I mean, he's not a kid. But he's just coming into his, his years where he should be the best. And, yeah, he just needs... He just needs Someone to scream at him. You are right. I think the team uh, team likes that. Yeah, definitely. the whole team likes that. Uh, William Munro says Genie should have started for Chan. Um, interesting actually because I, I I agree with you, but everybody else when we were talking about Genie on the start eleven prediction show and stuff was saying Genie in an away game, you idiots. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And hindsight's a wonderful thing, isn't that's it? That's it, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. You know, I think Genie came on and did really well. He, did, it looked to me like Klopp had said to him. Your role is obviously the box to box with Fielder, but what I want you to do is I want you to look at that space at the top right of the pitch because mm. he kept popping up yeah. there, and I wonder whether that was game plan. Um, now that was a substitution that I liked of Jurgen Klopp from last night. Um, I didn't understand Tom the Daniel Sturridge substitution oh. and bringing Mane off. I remember at the time we were watching it and you were like, it can't be Mane, and I was trying to formulate in my head what we would do if that happens. Maybe it's because Firmino had more of a press than Mane. But Firmino was having a bad game, wasn't he? And every time Firmino gets pushed out left, he does not doesn't have the same it's effect. No, no. Um, I mean, Dad said, "Oh, maybe maybe he's not fit, Mane." I was like, he "Should have three games off. Yeah. He's got to be the fittest player that we've fucking got." Well, that's the weird thing because Klopp wouldn't make that decision because he's not. I don't think he'd do it just because. Oh man, he hasn't had a game. So I'm going to leave him on just so he can have a bit more football. I, th I think it's purely tactical. There was a reason behind it. I have no idea because it didn't do anything the re for like, the reason. If, the, if, if it was a tactical substitution, he's got it badly wrong. Yeah. If it comes out over the next day or so that he's took a bit of a knock and he felt something, a twinge or something like that, I get it. What I don't get is why we are moving Firmino from that number nine position yeah. regardless because yeah. if Mane's going off the field, right, what's wrong with Oxley chamberlain exactly. He's a winger, do you know what I mean? You're moving Firmino out of his position. If you want to get Sturridge on, make two substitutions at once. Yeah. You know, you could take Firmino off and put Sturridge on. You could put Oxley chamberlain on for the wing, yeah. keep that pace because ultimately that right back was struggling all day with Mane. Yeah, Mane had him on toast yeah. so often, like, do you know what I mean? And he, he was going inside, he was going outside, he was whipping deep balls in, he wasn't going at him, he was waiting for passes. He he just had him all over yeah. the place. And coming into that, what are you looking at, 75th minute, that right back would have been gas yeah. for chasing Mane around the field. And that's the time that you inject more pace and really hit home yeah. that advantage yeah. on him. And what we did was we changed someone with loads of pace for someone who's having an average game who was out of position. Yeah. And that for me is mad. That's a big plus, actually, on the fitness side of things, because they were really bad for it. They had they had a fella go off on a stretcher, obviously the keeper, but then the other one with a hamstring. Can we ban buggies on football fields, by <laughs> the way? Yeah, just drag them off by the arms. It was ridiculous. Yeah. Just get yeah. off the field. He's two yeah. yards from the white line. Drag him. Yeah. I'll go. I'll yeah. drag him. And they had that sign, didn't they? We, we put it out on Twitter before, but uh, as the teams were lining up, it said "Win or Die," yeah. which we, we we joked was what Liverpool Twitter says is is backing our team yeah. up. But maybe that's why. Yeah. Maybe he didn't. You know, he wanted to get off the field and, and safe because <laughs> yeah. he was worried that yeah. the fans were going to get at him. Fast, but you, you're right; him. they break down. But the players were breaking thing down. With when we bring them back to Anfield, just just that last twenty minutes, mm -hmm. just run them ragged. Maribor as well, they aren't going to be much fitter. Sevilla, all right, maybe because, I, I don't know, it's a, the league's a higher level, but we just, 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 we have the best fitness in our league. 
So then, that's yeah. the most, that's the fittest league in the world, in my opinion. So it's a, it's a, it's a weapon that we should be utilising in yeah. these Champions mm-hmm. League games, isn't it, Ross? Yeah, I, I think that's the only reason I can think of that he brought storage on that they were knackered, and you know, he's got quick feet, and he's probably our, our most natural finisher that we've got yeah. in the team. Um, but I, I wouldn't have taken Mane off. Like, I, like you said, he's just. Don't remember, he's one of our best players up to William and Salah. I, the, the, I just don't think Sturridge did it. I, I, I like Sturridge. I don't like the way he likes to keep hold of the ball. Mm. I don't like the way he thinks he can do it by himself sometimes. And sometimes that's amazing. Everton is the prime example. He comes on and goes, no, I'm just going to have a shot. Obviously, it's the post man. He took it away. But there were so many chances there where he could have just slotted it. Just play through. Play through the little gap that Coutinho was doing all game, and we were benefiting from it. But instead, he's like he's waiting for the touch to come down so he can shoot or beat a man. And I don't know if maybe Klopp said to him, "You got there. You be the impetus for this last 15." But didn't work. Didn't work, and I didn't, pretty much never works when he comes on and tries to do that. A lot of players struggle with that pitch last night as well. I, I noticed. I don't know. Is it, don't know. It's a three G picture in him last night. But like, oh, it was plastic. Was it plastic? It was plastic? Yeah, it was like right. the fucking like with stories. Like the ball was bobbling in front of him. Yeah. And he just couldn't get hold of it. That was his, that was his problem in some cases. Fair enough. But even like passing and stuff, the ball was like just proper bouncing and and, and going on. on and stuff. Yeah. I must yeah. admit, I'd not noticed that at all. Like, so that's quite interesting. I'll have a little look into that. Um, Joe D LFC says Sturridge takes too much time on the ball. Um, George X says Sturridge of twenty fourteen would have scored yesterday, maybe twice. He's not that man anymore, and he doesn't give the ball, which I assume is doesn't give the ball to his teammates. Yeah. Um, he And then David Gilhardy says he had a massive impact on the Leicester game though, that's and true. that's true. You know, Sturridge looked really, really bright and, and really full of it uh, for the Leicester game. It's picking and choosing those moments to bring Daniel Sturridge in, and I don't feel like I don't feel he can consistently be in the first eleven because I don't think he provides everything that we need him to provide. Although I rate him as a footballer, and also I don't know how, how and everybody knows this. I don't know how long his body will last if you play yeah. him every single game. But I also don't think he's that good of an impact substitute either. Some players are really good at it, and they're very, very few and far between. Like Premier League era, Solskjaer was probably the best as the impact sub, mm. you know. And that's the only one that really jumps out to me. Um, maybe Javier Hernandez, when he yeah. was at Manchester United yeah. as well, was quite good. It's a very different skill, being a substitute well, and coming in an impact. as well. Giroud, yeah. Yeah, that's a great example, yeah. a great shout. Sturridge doesn't seem to be that guy yet. Um, Sam Shepard said Sturridge needs more game time. He's not fully match fit. Uh, Do group Dylan says Sturridge needs a strike partner? But he's not good enough. That that's a great point. He, you know, I, I disagree with he's not good enough. I yeah. do think he's got the talent there, but I do think that he plays better with a strike partner. Maybe that's why we kept Firmino. Maybe, but I mean, it didn't work, obviously. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, all right. Well, if there's any other uh, comments anyone wants us to read out, then get them in now. Um, David Go was a proper sub, says David Gilhardy. Our goal, fantastic. Again, I can't believe we've missed it. Yeah, literally. Terrible, aren't they? It starts from the right wing, and it was. I remember yesterday, it was Trent kept hold of the ball. Yeah, and it he could have, and he ball. plays a little ball inside. Then we recycle that play, Emery Chan, and we play it across. And we've stretched the play there, brought it from one side to the other. And then you're just, you're just waiting for a bit of magic off Manny and Coutinho, our best players, and they showed it. It looked so easy. Why didn't we do that five at the time? It's, it's mad. It's funny, isn't it? Because every time I see professional footballers play a one-two, I get flashbacks to five aside, and it's the one thing that every five aside and every football team of every level struggle to defend against. Yeah. One twos kill players off, and Coutinho or Mane when they're doing a Tom's right rush, it's difficult to stop. Yeah, I think he took three players out with with one one move. Yeah. essentially, didn't they? Just, and I think it was lack of concentration from them because yeah. he. Because Coutinho stopped and stood them up rather than just directly running at them. They didn't know where he was going to put the ball. And obviously yeah. Manny's first touch is straight back. And by the time they realise where it's gone, yeah. you know, Coutinho's already already on the ball. And it's a good finish as That's well. Yeah, to I mean, it was inside near post so rather than... He lifts it over the goalkeeper, does he? He knows exactly what he's doing. He's yeah. seen the goalkeeper go down mm. early and he smacks it into the net above. And absolutely brilliant. Last comment then, uh, KPAC07. Looking forward, what would re-establish the average fans confidence in the current team we've got Newcastle Man U Maribor Tottenham next I 
think we just need to finish finish our dinner. We the defence looks okay. We're, we're, we're stopping teams from having more than five chances a game. It's ridiculous when we're still drawing. The attacks creating chances, that's always what Klopp wanted, always what he's tried to instil in this team. It's literally just one of them goes in, or maybe two, we go on a route. I'm, I'm convinced if we get that bit of confidence that we can finish and we, we can take a bit of time, we'll just start slotting them left, right and yeah. centre. And I think it's more, that's all it is. That's literally all it is for me, is just tucking away them chances. And for you, Ross? Yeah, just getting some points on the board like the last game. You know, we just about won it. I was happy that we you know, just got some, we got three points. Um, and like Tom says, you know, just, just yeah, just be more assertive, I think, in, in defence and, and attack. Um, and I, I think it'll come as well. I think changing four or five plays every game is having an effect for me. Um, I know we were brilliant going forward last night. We just didn't score. I'm not blame, blaming that. But when you, you know, you take three, four players out, I think it just, you know, people need to get used to it. And I said this about the whole back five even in pre-season. Just keep it the same. There's yeah. no need to change it every game. Yeah. Um, and I think for that question that came in, sorry, satisfying Twitter fans, we'd have to win 5-0 every game. Yeah. I think it's as simple as wins. Yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah. And, you know, a, a run of wins. Because mm. wins make everything better. Whether you play well or not, just getting wins make, makes you forget everything else. Uh, so thanks very much for the question. Much appreciated. Uh, there you go. Then that was the match review show. We're going to go off and film the final word show now. We've got Nina Kauser uh, coming in from the Anfield Index. Um, really, really looking forward to that show. In fact, she may well even be here now. Uh, oh, with Gags Tandon as well from the Anfield Index. Uh, and somebody else as well. There's loads of them. The final word show is going to be absolutely amazing. Do go and check it out. It's the redmentv.com. It's £5 a month. We'll be doing 45 minutes to an hour on that game. It's going to be brilliant. It's going to be hosted by Paul, of course. Get over there. Check out the rest of the content. We've got the Reds News Roundup coming up later on today. And I've got a really in-depth statistical and analytical look at Liverpool's month. Um, so I'll be filming that next week with John Reid, where we'll be diving into club substitutions and a host of other things. Thanks for watching. Like the video and subscribe to the YouTube.